Hello dear primary four students. Welcome to unit three. We will continue our journey with lots of amazing scientific phenomena and topics. Today, you will get to know more about unit three, energy and fuel. I'm really excited because in this unit, we will build on what we have learned in unit two. And of course, from the title, energy and fuel, you easily guess that we make use of what we knew about energy. It's different types and it's different transformation. I think that when I heard the name of the energy and fuel, I thought that we will continue on the information that we learned about the energy and the changes and the different types. But what is the relation between energy and fuel? In this unit, we are going to explore together the different types of fuel and how we use them to produce energy. And this will be very interesting because you will explore things we use and see every day. Now, get ready and get your science book and your notebook to start our lesson. At the beginning of each unit, as usual, we think about all the information and examples we already know about the topic we will learn. عشان كده هنبدأ نسأل نفسنا نعرف إيه عن الوقود. I want you to think well and ask yourself what is fuel and what is it used for in our lives. Is it important or can we live without it? Is there a direct relation between the fuel and energy production? تفتكروا هل في علاقة بين الوقود وإنتاج الطاقة؟ طب إيه المقصود بالوقود وإيه هي استخداماته؟ Don't worry, you don't have to give exact answers to all these questions because we will learn them together and collect pieces of evidence from the lessons and activities to know the correct scientific answers for these questions. Now, I want you to think about anything you know or have seen around you related to fuel. Think of any examples you can add and write down all your ideas in your notebook. Take your time. I'm sure you have written down many ideas about fuel and their uses in our lives. I also thought about many types of fuel and thought about their relation with energy production. أنا كمان فكرت في أنواع الوقود واستخدامها في حياتنا اليومية وحددت علاقتها بإنتاج الطاقة. You know, when I hear the word fuel, I think of gasoline. We always use it as fuel for cars to move. فاكرين الجازولين البنزين؟ I also think of natural gas, which we use for cooking at home. كلمة وقود فكرتني بالبنزين والغاز الطبيعي اللي بنستخدمهم عشان يوفروا لنا أنواع مختلفة من الطاقة. You know what I also observed? I observed that any type of fuel give us one form of energy. For example, Car needs gasoline to move, which means fuel causes kinetic energy. Also, the natural gas we use for cooking, الغاز الطبيعي اللي بنستخدمه للطهي, give us thermal energy, which is the heat energy. Fuel is very important. It has different uses in our lives, so it's impossible to live without fuel. But are fuels always available? Or will they come to an end? And if some types of fuel came to an end, what will we do? يا ترى لو الوقود خلص هنعمل إيه؟ These questions will help us to learn more about the types of fuels and their different uses. So let's open our book on page one and look carefully at the pictures you will find. I want you to observe the first two pictures only, then identify the source of fuel in them. What are the energy forms that we get from the fuel, and what are the uses of these types? هنركز في الصور جدا على مصدر الوقود والطاقة. The 
This is the first picture you observed. Look at it carefully. What is the fuel used here and what energy does it give? I see in the picture an oven for making bread. I think the source of fuel here is the natural gas. Source of fuel is natural gas. Also, when this fuel is used to start the fire of the oven, thermal energy comes from the fuel. I also observed a second form of energy. It is the light caused by the fire, which I can call light energy. يبقى الوقود المستخدم هو الغاز الطبيعي والطاقة اللي نتجت هي الطاقة الحرارية والطاقة الضوئية. I think the second picture was similar to the first one. Let's observe it carefully. Can you see a fuel or energy? It's really like the first picture because it shows us a cooking pot boiling on a cooker. This uses the natural gas as a fuel. It gives thermal energy that we use for cooking. Can you think of other fuel other than natural gas that we can use for cooking? You know, when I searched on the internet, I found ovens that uses solar energy. I'm sure that these ovens are used in the places where other fuel difficult to get. أظن إن الأفران اللي هتعتمد على الطاقة الشمسية دي موجودة في الأماكن اللي مش بنعرف نجيب فيها مصادر الطاقة التانية. Using solar energy is very important and many countries are thinking how they can use it. As we observed in the speed concept that the scientists designed cars that depend on solar energy. This will reduce pollution. What about the third picture? For the third picture, We should observe that there is a burning fire behind the girl. The fuel used may be wood or coal, ممكن يبقى الخشب أو الفحم. Because the girl will burn it to use it for heating. So what is the energy that comes from it? Thermal energy. Just wait a second. Did you observe that I can see the girl using computer and the lights of the rooms are turned on? We all have these devices in our homes, which need electricity to operate and power them. This means that the electricity that's used at home is electrical energy. Electrical energy. I'm sure there is a source of fuel that we can get this type of energy. أو أي مصدر تاني يدينا الطاقة دي زي إيه مثلا؟ I know that the electricity is produced in power stations. These stations use a type of fuel to be able to generate electricity. محطات توليد الكهرباء عندها مصدر للوقود عشان يديها الطاقة دي. And then it's transmitted to homes and factories. يبقى محطات توليد الكهرباء هتستخدم وقود عشان تنتج الكهرباء اللي هننقلها لكل الأماكن ونستخدمها. We will learn about this topic while we are studying this unit. All the information and observations I said will help you in collecting pieces of evidence from lessons and activities during studying of the different concepts. This will help us explain the anchor phenomena and carry out the unit project. Can you guess what is the anchor phenomena of the energy and fuel units? يا ترى بقى ايه الظاهره الرئيسه لوحده الوقود والطاقه؟ The anchor phenomena in unit 3 is water for energy. Water? Can water be a source of energy? This is what we will explore together. Let's go to our science tech book and watch the video that shows the anchor phenomena. The most important thing is to record your observations and ideas while you are watching the video. جاهزين نتفرج على الفيديو؟ أهم حاجة وانتو بتشوفوا الفيديو try to think how water can be a source of energy.
water can be a powerful force. If you've ever jumped waves or watched a waterfall, you'll have some idea of its amazing strength. Look at this and what a noise the water makes. Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe in Southern Africa is famous for being one of the largest waterfalls in the world. But even a calm river possesses kinetic energy as it flows over the Earth's surface, pulled by gravity. Long ago, people realized they could harness the power of water and built water mills on rivers. See how the mill's wheel is turned by the force of water. The energy from the water is used to work machinery, which turns a millstone to grind corn to make flour for bread. We are still harnessing the power of water and making it work for us by building It's made it easier to navigate by keeping the water flow consistent. Many countries consider hydroelectricity a clean source of power because it doesn't involve burning anything, unlike other major sources of energy, coal, oil, and natural gas. It's also a renewable resource. The water in the dam is replenished every time it rains or snows further upstream. The construction of a large dam has a huge impact on the surrounding area. By making a reservoir, places that were once dry land are flooded with water, changing the local ecosystem. Local wildlife and anyone who lived there lose their homes. If you block a river with a dam, you also change the migration routes used by fish. Would you like a dam to be made near where you live? Do you think the benefits of a dam outweigh the drawbacks? And if so, why? The first thing I observed is that water always moves and it has a pushing force, especially where, especially in waterfalls, shallalate. What is the form of energy that the falling or moving water has? Yes, it is the kinetic energy. I hope you could write down key vocabulary that describe the using of the power of water as a source of energy and its many uses. لفت انتباهي ان حركة وقوة اندفاع المية في الشلالات هتكون مصدر لطاقة الحركة وهنقدر نستخدمها في حاجات كتيرة قوي. While watching the video, I was able to collect key vocabulary like dams, electrical energy, hydroelectric power. Dams اللي هي السدود. Electrical power اللي هي الطاقة الكهربائية. Hydroelectric energy الطاقة الكهرومائية. Hydroelectric كهرو 
مائية الكلمات دي هتفيدنا قوي نفهم the process of generating electricity from the water energy تعالوا نكمل In order to know more about the process of generating electricity from water energy let's read the text in our book on page 2 Don't forget to underline each sentence or example that explains the power of water as a source of energy and how can we generate electricity from it I'll also read the text and then I'll share my observations with you You can easily understand the power of water. تعالوا نفتكر ايه اللي بيحصل لنا لما نكون بنعوم في البحر وتيجي موجه وتخبطنا بقوه. What will happen when you think about what will happen to you while you are swimming in the sea and the wave comes and pushes you strongly? You will find that the wave moves you from your place. أكيد هتتحرك من مكانك. And it can also make you fall down. Why? Sure, this is because of collision. In this case, the energy in the wave transferred into the body of the person standing in front of it. This energy made him move from his place. بيحصل انتقال للطاقة وقت التصادم. هي دي الفكرة اللي هنعتمد عليها. This is exactly what happens to generate energy from water. Like the example we saw in the video. The water mills or water wheels الساقية بيحصل ايه في الساقية؟ Observe this picture When the water moves it hits the arms of the water wheels and starts pushing them as well لما المية تتحرك هتزق الأذرع فبالتالي هتتحرك Humans use this movement of water in the farming طب مع التطور حصل ايه؟ In modern times, humans started building dams. As you see, تعالوا كده نشوف شكل الدام. يعني إيه dams؟ قلنا إن هي السد أو السدود. The dam is a place where water is stored in large quantities. And then it pushes out of small holes. لو ركزتوا قوي في الصورة هتشوفوا أخرام صغيرة المية بتخرج منها. During pushing, certain devices move in order to generate electricity. السد مكان بيتم فيه تخزين المية بكميات كبيرة جدا. وبعدين المية هتخرج من فتحات صغيرة بقوة واندفاع. وأثناء اندفاعها بتحرك أجهزة معينة عشان يتم توليد الكهرباء. The electrical energy that is generated from the water energy is called hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity طاقة كهرو مائية كهرو من كهرباء وماء من ماء Hydroelectricity This is a very effective and appropriate way to generate electricity by building dams and it also gives us a source of clean energy طاقة نظيفة What does clean energy mean? Clean energy means that energy doesn't pollute the environment I mean, it doesn't produce smoke or dust that pollutes the air. But, but it may have a negative impact on the ecosystem in the place where the dam is built. Because of what? Because the natural path of the water is changed. بدل ما المية كانت هتمشي في الطريق ده هيبتدي يتغير طريقها. Or in the other words, when the natural path of water is changes, this makes changes to the environment. And the landscape too. This will affect the living organisms that live there and their adaptation, as we studied before. استخدام السدود في توليد الطاقة ليه سلبيات وإيجابيات. إيجابيات زي إننا بنولد طاقة نظيفة ما بتسببش تلوث للبيئة لأن مصدرها المية. طب إيه هي سلبياتها؟ سلبياتها إنها هتأثر على الكائنات الحية اللي بتعيش في منطقة السد لأن هما مش متعودين إن المكان ده كان يكون فيه مية. This is a problem in fact. And so we will think about solving this problem like scientists in the unit project. 
which will certainly be connected to the anchor phenomena. The project of Unit 3 will call Dam Impacts. تأثير بناء السدود. Dam Impacts. In this project, you will use what you know about energy and the environment to assess the positive and negative impacts of building a dam on the surrounding environment and community. What do you observe about the picture of the dam here? تعالوا كده نركز قوي في الصورة دي. It's a picture of a dam called Kariba Dam. Kariba Dam. It's in South Africa. What can we observe in the picture? And how did this dam change the landscape? I noticed that this dam is a huge building with a very large lake behind it. It's clear that this lake wasn't located in this place at all. البحيرة دي ما كانتش موجودة قبل بناء السد. But the dam kept the water behind it and formed the lake. طب يا ترى وجود البحيرة دي هيأثر على الكائنات الحية والتوازن البيئي؟ I think that forming a huge lake like this in a place where wasn't there at the beginning will for sure change the environment and the adaptation of the living organisms that were living in this place. Because those living organisms were living on land and they weren't marine organisms. Also, the most important thing is that this stored water would go to another place. So it's now kept in the lake and will not go in its natural path. Of course, this will affect the organisms that wouldn't have this water. But building a huge dam like this has also a positive impact. زي ما السد عمل تغيرات وشب بمشاكل كتير هيكون لي إيجابيات واستخدامات برضو زي إيه مثلا The positive impact is the generation of electricity توليد الطاقة الكهربية This will give a main source of energy for all the people of the country where the dam is built So we will think in the unit project about one of the negative impacts of building a dam but this is not only our job our main job is to come up with a solution to one of the impacts that we will identify. يعني لازم زي ما هنتكلم على السلبيات هنفكر في حل للمشكلة دي. So, we will open our science book on page 3 and you are going to write down any questions you have that can help you carry out the project. Your questions may be about positive and negative impacts of dams or how they impact the environment, or what are the solutions that can reduce or decrease the harms of negative impacts. The questions that you record will help you organize your ideas and know what evidence you need to collect during the different concepts of this unit. The name of the first concept is devices and energy. تعالوا بقى كده نتعرف على الconcepts اللي هتبقى معينا. Devices and energy. In this concept, we will learn about forms and chains of energy transformations and how it transfers inside different devices. أول concept الأجهزة والطاقة. هنتعلم فيه عن صور وسلاسل تحولات الطاقة. وإزاي الطاقة بتتنقل في الأجهزة المختلفة. The second concept is called about fuels. We will learn more about fuels, their types, and different fuel sources. تاني concept اسمه عن الوقود. هنتعلم أكتر عن الوقود وأنواعه ومصادر الوقود المختلفة. The third concept is called renewable energy resources. We will identify the forms of renewable energy and how to use them to meet our energy needs. ثالث concept مصادر الطاقة المتجددة. هنحدد صور الطاقة المتجددة وإزاي نقدر نستخدمها عشان نلبي احتياجاتنا من الطاقة. After we go through the different activities over the three concepts, we will be ready to carry out the unit project. That was the end of our lesson today. خلاص وصلنا للآخر. We learned about the anchor phenomena. Water for energy and the unit project dam impacts. اتكلمنا النهارده عن الظاهره الرئيسه 
وهي استخدام المية كمصدر للطاقة وكمان اتكلمنا عن مشروع الوحدة عن تأثير السدود We also reviewed all previous information that we have about energy Its relation to fuels and its different uses Thanks to all the scientists who joined us today. Until the next lesson, you need to think and search for the different forms of energy that are used in the devices around us. هتفكروا في أنواع الطاقة الموجودة في الأجهزة اللي حوالينا. Thanks and see you next time.